Hey guys, Dan here from Your Guitar Academy and welcome back to lesson two of our 30 day challenge. And today we're gonna to be building upon what we learned yesterday. Okay, so hopefully you've been spending some time with that E minor chord. You head on over to the website, you've had a little look at the, the actual chord box so you kind of get familiar with that and you're just starting to just get a little bit of a feel for that plectrum and holding the guitar. That's the first steps. Today what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a second chord and do a teeny little bit of theory. So pick up your guitar and let's get started. Okay, so if you're new to this course and you've just come through to this on YouTube, then please remember that you can head on over to the website and you'll find full write-ups for every lesson, all of the tab, all of the chord boxes, the fretboards, everything you need to absolutely smash and master every single lesson. As well as that, please do like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It massively helps us continue to provide you these free courses and leave us a comment. If you've got questions, we will get back to you. So leave us a comment under the video and we'll speak to you there. Okay then guys, so let's get down to it. We've been working with the E minor since yesterday, okay? Um, so you've had a bit of time to really just get your fingers used to the thumb at the back, the wrist around, how to push down on the chord, okay? Now we're gonna add in a second chord, and it looks like this. Sounds like this, okay? So a couple of things here. First of all, it's called a C major seven. Really, honestly, no need to worry about what's that name mean? What does E minor mean? What does C major seven mean? These are questions that will be answered in due course. <laughs> but right now, think of it quite simply as just a major sounding chord. So the major chords sound a little bit more bright, a little bit more happy, a bit more upbeat potentially. Lots of ways you could describe it. Some might even come and say quite melancholy. I mean, it's whatever you hear really, but that's a typical way you might think of major as a bit more happy and minor as a little bit more sad, for example, right? That's just the typical way to think about, you know, a bit that kind of thing. But really for us at this point, it's just a chord shape that helps us. It's a relatively easy chord shape. I mean, it won't feel easy for you guys right this second, but in terms of ease of chord shapes, it's up there with the easier ones. Um, and it allows us to practice the main principles, okay? So let's refresh those principles and practice this chord. All right, so the chord, like this, we're gonna start with our third finger there. Okay, so we're third fret, so one, two, three on the a string, so the second string down. And again, we're gonna talk about those strings in this lesson, in fact, once we need a break. So, we got that one there. Uh, third finger, once again, try and get it right across as far as you can so that you're you know, almost at the silver fret, but not over it, of course, but just about there. And again, my thumb is nice and at the back, it's flat at the back, quite far down, not up here. Not like that, but just like that if you can. It allows you, think about it, it allows you to bring that wrist around like so. And then the second finger goes on the second fret of the D string, so this third string down here. And that, basically that's exactly where it was for the E minor, but we've got this finger doing it now instead. So we're like that, okay? So we've got third fret and second fret. Okay, and with this one we really need to make sure that we've got that nice bridge above those two because when you pluck that, so if you take your attention to the right hand for a second, you pluck the A string and you pluck the D string, you will quite often hear from beginners that you can't get that D string because this finger is just too flat, okay? So once again, have a little look where these calluses are. So I'm using the beautiful cameras again, so I'm gonna dig in as hard as I can. Come over to this camera and let's just find my position there. So can you see on these two fingers, these middle two fingers, where those calluses are? Hopefully you can, let's just get it. There we go. So you can just see right on the fingertips. That's why I'm really focusing in. And it will hurt a little bit, but that's what we're trying to achieve. And what we want here is we can strum all six strings. Okay, so you can once again, 
just go through all six and try and get them sounding as clear as possible. So it'll be a little bit of back and forth, you know, you'll be adjusting, readjusting, take your hand off, have a rest, come back in, adjust, readjust, this kind of thing. It's a, it's a long process, you know, just, just, you know, go easy on yourself. No one gets it too quickly. Just take your time, take a break, come back, keep working it in that manner. Okay, that's the best way to kind of go through this. Um, in theory, that low E string doesn't need to be played, so you can kind of start strumming it from the A string, but in practice, don't worry too much about it. The, the E still works really fine. You see? So you can kind of just practice strumming that a little bit, all six strings. No rhythm, no rhyme, no nothing, just, just bosh, doing it like so, okay? So that's our next chord. That's called a C major seven. And just have a little break there. What we're gonna be trying to practice is simply going between those two chords. So we're gonna be going between an E minor and a C major seven. Okay? So just have a little look at that. So there's an E minor there. So it might take you a while just to get back to that E minor now, but just try and get back to that chord. Remember, we're developing muscle memory. As soon as you start changing between chords, that muscle memory will develop really fast because you'll have to keep going back to it. Keep going back to it, keep going back to it. So you're just gonna constantly, it's like you know, drilling in a, a, a phrase or a line or a new language. You just keep going over and over the words and it's the same here. So there's that E minor chord. And my movement can be something like this. I can take that second finger away and I can attach it to the third fret and drop this one down. So I can kind of do this movement, okay? If you like. And then equally on the way back, you can take that one up there and put that one down there. These little micro movements can help. Um, and this I've found over the years that this is different depending on different students. So some like that kind of, ah, that's a nice way through it. Others just want to take it off and put it on. Take it off and put it on. Take it off and put it on. So you kind of get used to the whole moving, the whole chord moving, and that's no problem either. The point here is that we need some practice doing this, okay? So I'm just gonna spend just like a minute or so now with you guys, just, I'm just gonna go back and forth between these two chords, okay? There's no timing at this point, there's no pressure. Just get to the chord, play it, and do not worry how it sounds, okay? Just don't worry how it sounds too much. Just, just even if it's a little bit deaded, okay? Just, just spend a minute now with me, just doing your absolute best so just get used to those two chords. Then go back. And then again to the C major seven, just really just take your time. Whilst you're doing it, you might want to start absorbing the sound from, from me, what I'm playing. Does it sound, does that sound like yours? Kind of minory, a bit darker, a little bit cooler, more relaxed on the major seven. You know, kind of developing your ear at the same time. And then back to that C major seven. Now by this point, I would imagine that your, your hand wants to pack in. You know, you might even find you're shaking. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot, you know, you're doing a lot of stuff with your wrist here, your thumb is pushing where you've never really pushed before. Your fingers are really burning into those calluses. So what I suggest is either carry on now or just take a quick break whilst I show you something else. So this is really important whenever I'm you know, teaching one-to-one, -one, which is the experience I'm trying to give you here now. Um, is that we know when to take a break. So we're just gonna take a quick break there. And I'm gonna show you something that's very important on my magical chalkboard. We're gonna do the names of the strings, okay? So the strings are E, A, D, G, B, E. Okay, so let me just pop that up there. So that's, that's from low to high. Let me just make sure I've got it in the right place. So from low to high, is E, A, D, G, B, E. And what, what I mean by low is low sound, okay? So that's, um, you know, low to high, okay? And high sound, okay? So you've got E on either side, basically, um, but the, uh, this one is the, the thickest string, the lowest sounding string, then as you go to A, D, G, B, E, they're getting thinner and thinner. Okay, so for example, if I just put that down for one second, let's just make sure we clarify that properly. We've got E, lowest string, A, D, G, B, E. So 
I'm sure a lot of you guys have got a tuner and we highly recommend that you have a digital tuner and very likely if you set it to guitar mode rather than chromatic, so guitar mode, it's gonna want to find the E. So it's gonna, it's gonna say E on the screen and then it's gonna say like, oh, you're a little bit flat or you're a little bit sharp and you adjust the tuning peg. Okay, this isn't a tuning video. There's plenty of those on YouTube. Um, a, D, G, B, E, okay? Now, you're probably thinking, okay, that's great. I'll, I'll just memorize that. And that's exactly right. You need to memorize that. Um, and I've got a nice little way to do so. So we're gonna remember this beautiful rhyme. Elephants, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I've spelled elephants wrong now, I'm pretty sure my daughter would kill me. Elephants and donkeys, yeah, I'm gonna write this down, grow big ears. Elephants and donkeys grow big ears. There's one for all the adults out there. There's nothing wrong with that. We all need a little bit of help here and there. So let's just get that on the, uh, on the other thing so you can see that nice and close on the other camera. I can see that that's pretty good there. Elephants and donkeys grow big ears. Um, that's gonna help you. Elephants and donkeys grow big ears and they really do grow big ears, essentially, especially Dumbo, right? So elephants and donkeys grow big ears. You can come up with your own versions of that. Um, I've heard a lot, Eddie, what was the one that uh, Cameron was telling me about today? Eddie ate dynamite, goodbye Eddie. That's quite a good one as well. There's, there's loads and loads and loads. Whatever you want to use, that's the one I've always used with, with your Guitar Academy. It's just gonna help you memorize those strings. You're gonna need to know those strings because I'm gonna be saying, okay, put your third finger on the D string. Put your second finger on the A string. Find the G string, you know, these kind of things. So the more you can do that, so I say to you, okay, this C major seventh chord, We've got third fret A string, elephants and, second fret D string, donkeys. Okay, so it, to help, you know, with those kind of instructions, that's an important bit of theory that will kind of get us started. So, with that said and done, let's pick up the guitar again and just go back to this. So, E minor, C major seven, okay? Now this time when you do it, I want you to try and get it sounding as crisp as you can. So I want you to go, get to the C major seven. Okay, and if it's not quite right, adjust it, readjust it, get your thumb further back, try and get that bridge around. It's just a lot of trial and error. You've got to feel your way through that one quite literally and just keep going around again, okay? So you've got the whole day up until tomorrow's lesson to just go back and forth between that E minor and C major seven. Remind yourself of that elephants and donkeys grow big ears and continue the rest of it. So continue to get yourself comfortable with the guitar. Make sure you're holding that plectrum all through the days. And now we've got these two chords that you're gonna be practicing all the way through that. Try and just take little breaks. So pick it up as and when you can. Do a, do a stint of 10 minutes or so um, before the hands just hurt too much. Then give it a break, come back. You'll be surprised what happens in that break time. Uh, you're kind of, everything's kind of happening neurons are firing, whatever it is. Um, and finally, you know, your fingers are starting to remember. So when they come back, they're getting stronger, they're remembering, and it's getting easier each time. So work with that, try and get them sounding as clear as you can while still changing. And I'll see you next time tomorrow for the next lesson. Okay guys, so thank you so much for watching this video. That's it for today. Please do head on over to the next lesson when you're ready, which you can find here, or you can start from the beginning of the playlist right here on YouTube over here. Also, if you want to leave us a comment, we do our best to answer any questions that you might have and pop us a like and subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Every little helps. Thank you so much, guys. Speak to you later.